Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to our very first look at the Inibuilds A320 Neo version 2 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now yes, I know what you're thinking, why do we need another Airbus A320? Well, to be honest, why not? It's going to be freeware and my opinion is the more the merrier. The biggest draw card for this aircraft, it is going to be available for all of you Xbox users who have so far been limited to choice and it's set to be released with Sim Update 15. Now Sim Update 15 has been pushed back another month so we're only going to see it in April. This is a beta version of this aircraft. It does contain some bugs. I've been following the Microsoft Flight Simulator forums. So I haven't flown this aircraft yet. I've only uh, loaded it up to check out the EFB and uh, calibrate my throttle and insert my SimBrief username. But today is gonna to be our very first test flight. We're gonna do a short flight over the channel from Amsterdam to Manchester. We're just gonna test out the systems and see how she flies. I'm interested to see the VNAV and LNAV capabilities of this aircraft or uh, otherwise known as managed mode in the Airbus. Like I said, this is gonna be freeware. Uh, it's gonna be a default aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So it's not quite study level, but it's definitely better than the default original A320 that we got with the base game. So let's drive straight in and see what we have. Now my first impressions when I climb into the cockpit is I quite like the textures. I do like the wear and tear that's shown here on the glare shield. I think that's quite a nice little touch. As I said, yeah, we have a working EFB, which we'll go through in a second. And then we also have some silly little quirks included in this aircraft, like we can open and close the windows. Um, it has some sunshades. It also has the tray table and the footrests. Um, let me just close this window before I forget. Right there, windows are closed. So first things first, we make sure the parking brake set, landing gear lever is down, the wipers are off, and we can set some battery power. All right, so let's get some power to the aircraft and see what she looks like. So we're gonna go to the overhead panel. I'm gonna turn battery master one and two on. And there it lights up. And then we're gonna connect the external power. And there we have that familiar clunk. Okay, let's just dive in quickly. So we're gonna go emergency extra lights armed, seatbelt signs on and auto. We'll just assume we've refueled already. Nav and logo lights can go on, cruise supply can go on, ground control can go on. Let's hit A doors one, two and three to nav. We'll turn on all the fuel pumps already. And cool, the lighting is already on, so the overhead integral lighting is on. All of the displays are already set to nice and bright. There are some warnings that everything powers up. All right, let's go through the EFB quickly. So as I said, uh, if you go to options, yeah, you can set all your preferences. Make sure you put in your sim brief username over there and everything else sets it to your preference. And then throttle, make sure you calibrate your throttle here at the bottom where it says throttle settings. And we can go through it very quickly. Dashboard, here yeah, is our main dashboard. So if we click on SimBrief, it's gonna say SimBrief plan requested. Our call sign for today is Easy216 from Amsterdam to Gatwick and then our alternate. Here yeah, we have some weather and then we can also search some metals over here. We have the operational flight plan over here also from SimBrief. That just pulls your some brief operational flight plan from there. We have a ground services page where we can control the doors and configurations over here and cabin lights. There is no model cabin in this aircraft. And then here we have some ground equipment that we can toggle, GPUs, jetways, etc. Does that work? Yeah, it works. All right, and then we have a built-in pushback feature, which we'll test out later. We will try that instead of using GSX. Then your payload page. Also, you want to click there to get your SimBrief payload. It's going to bring up your payload from SimBrief. We're going to apply a load over here. And then, yes, you're preparing aircraft, select loading speed. Do you want it instant, fast, or realistic? I'm just going to go fast, so it's only going to take five minutes to load the passengers and the fuel. And then here it has your load sheets and your CG graph. Next page, we have a panel state, so you can select between these four starter panels when you uh, load up the aircraft. If you want to do completely cold or dark or on the GPU, on the APU, or just ready for takeoff, if you just want to take off. And something very cool over here, we have a takeoff performance calculator. So we'll use that just now when we're setting up the MCDU. Uh, we'll see how that works. And then back to the options page. 
let's go and set up the MCDU. So first things first, go to MCDU, go to Atsu, and stick in your Simbrief username over there as well. FMGC. This gives us the main page of yes. So let's go to the init A page and init request. There we go. From Amsterdam to Gatwick, excuse me, to Manchester. And I'll turn it. Our flight number today is going to be easy 2166. Cost index 36, cruising flight level 320, minus 47 degrees. Here we have the winds page, the wind has already been uploaded. Flight plan, we are going to take off today from runway, what are the winds looking like? 150 at minor knots, so it's probably runway 18. We're not flying on Vathsim today, we are flying offline at the moment. Um, this is obviously just a test flight to see if this aircraft is that's some um, ready it looks like the aircraft are taxing up to 18 left we could probably just take off runway 24 with a bit of a crosswind but uh let's do 18 like everybody else so we're gonna go amsterdam departure 18 left and it's probably going to be the bergy 4 echo because we're going to Bergy. All right, so if I bring up Navigraph, it looks like uh, if we take off 18 left, we can go Bergy 4 Echo. It's going to take us that way out and then up all the way to uh, Bergy. So let's program that and see what looks the same. So we're going to do Bergy 4 Echo, insert that, and let's just zoom out. Go to the plan mode here. And there we go, it's got that programmed in there. So it looks right. Has it got the constraints? Yes, it does. 220 knots above 25. So, there's your bergy. So, that looks about right. So far, so good. Alright, let's continue with the MCDU. So, after the flight plan, we have secondary flight plan. Now, the secondary flight plan page in this aircraft is available. Uh, we're not going to go through that today. That's a video for another day, but it does look like it is uh, usable. Rad nav page. We'll do that for the approach for the ILS. It's got Sierra Papa Lima uh, VRR populated in there automatically, which is cool. Uh, in it, we're going to go in it B page. Our block fuel today is 4 tons, so we're going to do 4.1. Our zero fuel weight is 58.1. And our takeoff weight is 62.0. Our trip winds we can stick in there as well. Uh, plus 2, that's not going to make any difference at all. So we have a flight time of one hour. All right, cool. So the performance page. Now here, we let's try out that performance calculator. So we need the wind is going to be 140 at 09. The temperature is 11 and the, and the Q&H is 988. So take off. We're taking off runway 18 left. Surface is dry, the winds are 140 at 09. Outside air temperature is 11 degrees Celsius, the altimeter is 988. Our weight we said is 62 tons. Let me just confirm that. 62.2, so we're gonna go 62,200 plus minus. Flaps will be a flaps one. And flex air conditioning on anti ice or force toga off and calculate. All right, so we're not even going to use a path the runway. So there we have a performance. Our flex temperature 58 degrees Celsius. V1 137. V rotate 137. V2 140. Gross weight CG 30.2. And we have a Trimble horizontal stabilizer of 0 2 up. And I see here we can go send to FMGS. Data sent to FMGS. So it should be there. Not there. Oh, there we go. Confirm takeoff data. 137, 137, 140. Flaps, we said it's going to be 1 forward slash 0 0.2 up. And that's it. That is our takeoff data set. 988 was the QNH.
a nine eight nine. Uh, Three thousand was the transition altitude. Uh, these can be separate. Okay, so we can have constraints on the one and waypoints on the other one. That's cool. Alrighty, and with all of that set up, I think we're pretty much ready to get ready to get out of here. So let's go and start the APU. So APU master switch on. Start button. I would have thought the APU page would pop up. Let's go to it anyway. There we go, APU flap open. Let's jump outside and hear what it sounds like. sounds pretty good all right so all that starts up let's go to the ground page and uh, close the door move the jetway APU is still starting up. Let's do the before start checklist. So, cockpit preparation is completed. Gear pins and covers removed. Signs they are on and auto. Aidos are set to now. Fuel quantity we have four tons set. Takeoff data is set. Barrel reference we have 989 is set on both. And that's the before start checklist down to the line. Alright, APU is available. So, we can disconnect the external power. We can remove the GPU. Let's make sure the handbrake is on. And we'll remove the chocks also. Turn on the APU bleed. Beacon light can go on. And we can get ready for pushback. So before start checklist below the line. Windows and doors closed, beacon lights is on, thrust levers are set to idle, parking brake is set, and that's before start check this down to the line. Let's just have a look at it, see what's going on outside behind us. So we've got nobody behind us. So we're going to push back, nose right, tail left, and then we're going to taxi up to runway 18 left. Cool, so let's start the pushback and then we will start the engines. We'll start engine number two first, so we go back to the engine page. Let's see here. Toggle pushback. Nothing happens. Do we have a tug? No tug. Aft, aft pushback started. Nope. Or release the parking brake. Pushback stopped. After pushback started. Uh, the tug is moving its position now. Alright, so we've got a pushback going. Alright, so that works. Let's start engine number two. So, mission can go on. Engine number two starting up. Let's see what happens if we go left. There we go, now we're turning. Okay, not too bad. We're almost on the line actually. So now we can go off some more and let's stop right here. Okay, so we stop there, set the parking brake. Cool, 
So that worked. That worked quite nicely actually for a built-in pushback. I'm a little bit left of the taxiway, but not too serious. We also have engine number two starting up nicely, so engine number two is about to be available. There we go, let's start engine number one. Okay, great, so we have two good engine starts. So let's do the after start flow. Hope you can go off. Nose wheel light can be set to taxi, runway turn off lights can go on. Auto brake set to max. Ignition can go off here. We'll set flaps one. Arm speed brakes. And uh, we can do a flight control check. So full left. No, flight control page doesn't show up, so we've got flight controls. Full left, neutral, full right, neutral, full up, neutral, full down, neutral. Rudder, full left, neutral, full right. So this doesn't look like it's calibrated properly. I'm just using the profile that, for, that I used for the fly by wire. So I don't know how this aircraft's gonna fly anyway. Let's go and do the after start checklist, sorry. NCI is not required, ECAM status is checked. Pitch trim we have set 0 0.2 up. So that's luck. About there maybe. That looks about right. Rudder trim is zero. And let us go ahead and taxi now to runway 18 left. So if I bring up Navigraph again, we are over here. We're gonna head from here, we're just gonna taxi straight. Then we're gonna do a left turn up Bravo, we're gonna go all the way up Bravo, and then we'll go to we'll take off here from Echo 5. We don't need to cross this runway and go all the way to the end plenty runway available so we'll just go that way cool let's go so release the parking brake let's see if this aircraft rolls on its own it should be quite light we are rolling we are getting up here so let's just give it a little bit of a boost Take of config normal. He's an hurry. Right, so this is Alpha. So we do the next one, which is Bravo. should be taking off and landing on the same runway. Surely they'll be landing one eight right. Alrighty, so as we're taxiing up to one eight left, let's do the before takeoff checklist. So flight controls are checked, flight instruments checked, briefing is confirmed, flap settings we have config one B1 137 I think. Yes, V rotate 137 and V2 140. It's all set. HC is not, we're not using. 
EK member is take off and no blue. And that is the before take of checklist, dogs for line. All right, so here we are at Echo 5 for runway 18 left. And we can say we are cleared for takeoff. I don't see anybody in the approach path. Let's hope FSLTL doesn't uh, screw me again. So we can go and put the landing lights on. Those will light and go to takeoff. Transponder can go to TARA. We'll just pretend that we've got some sort of score code assigned to us. And we are ready for takeoff. So takeoff runway is confirmed. Cabin crew has been advised TKS is TARA. Engine mode selector is off and packs are on. Before takeoff checklist completes, let us get out of here. All right, so this is what's gonna happen. We're gonna take off one eight left. As we take off, I'm gonna do a little bit of hand flying. We're gonna try and follow the SID as much as we can by hand. Then I'm gonna engage the autopilot and we're gonna follow manage mode all the way up until minimums for our approach. I wanna see how well this aircraft can hold uh, VNAV and LNAV. That's the plan anyway. I didn't uh, set my a new profile for my hardware, so I don't know how well it's calibrated. I only did the throttle. I probably should have played around with it a little bit. Anyway, that's what this test flight is for. So let's line up on the runway and get out of here. So we have lined up, brake set, let's go 50% N1. Oh, that does sound nice. Alright, there's 50% and take off. Oh no, 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 no. Rudders, where's my rudders? Okay, something wrong there. I don't think I disconnected the tether. Okay, anyway, 80 knots. 100 knots. V1 rotates. Positive rate of climb, gear up. Right, pitching for the flight directors now. I do like the sound of this aircraft. Back to climb, pitch down, okay, climb thrust, trim down a little bit, Green S, we're gonna go flaps up. Set standard here. Start the right turn. Pitch up, the speed's getting away from us. Alright, that wasn't bad. I think I must just check my rudder. I think it didn't disconnect from the tiller when I was finished taxing, so... Couldn't maintain center line, but not bad. So, we're flying. Let's go ahead and activate the autopilot now. Here we 
go to a climb up to flight level 320 and we can clean up the aircraft. So, runway turn off lights go off, those lights go off, so all the spoilers, that doesn't look good. Should be in the climb detent. So the autopilot can bring us back on track now. So we're definitely above that altitude restriction. We're climbing to 250 knots below 10,000 feet. That little pink dot is our acceleration mark. So when we reach that, that's about where we'll reach 10,000 feet and the aircraft will continue to increase its speed to our cruising altitude. Let's just zoom out here a little bit. I don't think we have any other restrictions on this departure. There, it's got all the traffic around us. Alright, there we go, we've reached that mark. So our aircraft's pitching down, speed is increasing. Alright, above 10,000 feet. Landing lights can go off. Seatbelt signs can go off. It's nice and smooth. Alright, it's off the takeoff climb checklist. Landing gear is up, flaps are retracted, packs are on. Data reference got set standard on both, and that is the off the takeoff checklist complete. Okay, so now we're going to look at managed mode. We're going to look at the autopilot and the navigation display and we're going to see how well this handles the autopilot. So first things first, where's my top of climb arrow? Alright, there it is there. So that blue arrow is my top of climb marker. So that's where it thinks the aircraft is going to reach our cruising altitude of flight level 320. Let's try some. Uh, let's try a direct to. So let's assume we're flying on Vatsim and uh, HC has given us a instruction to fly direct to AMGOD. So we go direct AMGOD. It's showing it there, yes. Direct to AMGOD. Alright, that's worked. So now we're going to skip bogey. We're going to go direct to AMGOD. That is a successful. We have a fixed info page. Seems to be available. Do we have holds? Oh, we have offsets, we have holds. That's pretty good. I must say, the features of this aircraft are quite impressive for something that's going to be freeware and available for everybody and Xbox users, which is definitely a bonus. Okay, so we're climbing through, climbing through flight level 160 for 320, and I will see you guys in the cruise. So we are currently at flight level 320, and we only have about 100 nautical miles to our top of descent, which is marked uh, over there by the down arrow. So let's plan our arrival into Manchester. So our winds are uh, 100 at 07 knots. So it's going to be a runway 05, arrival. Uh, 07 knots. 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 One mic arrival. So let's program that into the MCU. So we're going to go destination, arrival, ILS 05 right, hotbed one mic. And we're going to insert that over there. Let's see what that looks like. So there we have the altitude restriction of 290 for hotbed. And we have the top of descent just before that. So we've got to go from 320 down to 290 by hotbed. And then we have another altitude restriction after that by Goalies, which is programmed there, 170. And then another altitude restriction after that by Rosen, which is 070, and a speed restriction. So that all matches the charts. 
sorry, I'm just referencing this chart over here. So I'm looking at it over here. I've got Otbeta 290, Goalies 170, then Bernie, then we're going to do a right turn to come around to Rosen, and then we're just going to come around and we're going to do the ILS 205 right. Let's see, that looks what it's got in here. So if I step through the flight plan, Otbeta, Goalies, all right, now that is different. This is supposed to be a left, a right turn to go around to Rosen and then come back for the. This looks like a little bit of a tight squeeze. All right, nevertheless, we'll follow this and see how the aircraft does. If it starts getting off course, then I will use the uh, selected modes to um, fly this approach that doesn't look right. It's supposed to go around and then come back around. Not a problem, we'll test it out and see how it goes. So let's do the performance page. We have a Q&H in Manchester of 986. Temperature is 13 and the winds 100 at 07. Temperature 13 Winds one zero zero at zero seven. Transition altitude it should be six thousand five hundred. And uh, Barrow is a minimum for this approach. Well, I'm not going to find it over here. I'll find it on the charts. It would be nice if this aircraft had Navigraph built in, but we won't get that with a, a default Microsoft Flight Simulator aircraft. Okay, the ILS minimums minimums three eighty six. 386 in the barrow, 386, config full is good, and that is our approach set up, rad nav page, we have the ILS, do, 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 do. now the ILS frequency should have populated in here automatically, it has not done so, this frequency here, 111.55, and of course is 052, so 111. Point five five. No, it doesn't work. Does IMC work? India Mike Charlie. India Mike Charlie, it's definitely the one that's 166 nautical miles away, not the one that's 4,000 nautical miles away. IMC 111.55, so that matches that. And the course is 052. All right, so I'm pretty sure that should have populated automatically in the rad nav page. Um, so maybe that's another bug. Pretty sure that should have been automatically populated. All right, so let's step through these pages and see what they look like. The engine page looks good. We have the bleed page. Cabin pressure. Cabin altitude 5,460 feet, that's good. Electrical page, Gen 1, Gen 2, AC 1, AC 2, DC. Hydraulic page, green, blue, yellow. Fuel page, it's a very low fuel amount, eh? I only have 2460 and it's telling me I'll still have 21 when I get to Manchester. Don't have any reserve fuel. I wonder if the Simbrief calculates the reserve fuel. I don't even know if I'm using the right Simbrief profile. I'll just use the default one. Uh, conditioning, doors, wheels, flight controls. And uh, all is good, all is good. With another 60 nautical miles to go for our top of descent, now would be a good time to tell you guys about a brand new supporter of the channel. Have you ever dreamt of adding a touch of aviation elegance to your life? Well, let me introduce you to Aviation Isle, your one-stop destination for all things aviation themed. Whether you're a seasoned aviation enthusiast, a private pilot, commercial pilot, student pilot, or even someone that just appreciates the beauty of aviation, then Aviation Isle has something for you. 
from stunning 3D lamps that illuminate your room with multiple colors to eye-catching wall art that adds a dash of personality to any space. They have phone cases that are not only stylish but also durable, offering premium protection to your device while showcasing your passion for aviation. They have some keychains that you can carry with you wherever you go, and they also have some aviation jewelry where you can express your love for flight and style. With Aviation Isle, you're not just buying products, you're investing in quality craftsmanship and a love for aviation that's evident in every piece they offer. Plus, with the easy-to-use website and worldwide shipping, getting your hands on these aviation treasures has never been easier. If you use the link in the description below the video, you'll get a further 10% off your entire order over and above the promotions they're currently running. Not only will you be getting a piece of aviation beauty, but you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. So while wait, head on over to Aviation Isle today and let your passion for flight soar to new heights. Okay, welcome back. So here we are 20 nautical miles away from our top of descent. I'm going to start the descent a little bit earlier to test out the VNAV and the LNAV. This is where the autopilot is really going to be tested out during the descent. We're going to see how well it manages the altitude and speed restrictions as it descends into Manchester. So first things first, our first altitude restriction is at Otpad at flight level 290. So if I roll back the altitude, it goes to flight level 250, but it should have flight level 290 in magenta because that's an altitude restriction. Blue is what I've set and then magenta is what the uh, managed mode wants to follow. So that doesn't look quite right. It should be... So it's changing what I've set. We'll see if that changes once we start the descent. So when we get to this, just before the top of descent marker, I'll uh, engage the descent. Now if you're coming from the Boeing, which does the descent automatically, Airbus does not do that. When you reach top of descent, you must initiate the descent yourself. It doesn't do it automatically, even if you've set a lower altitude in the altitude window. So 10 nautical miles away, I'm gonna start the descent now. So I'm gonna pull. I mean push, oh, okay, that's changed. So there we have, that's correct, we have flight level 290 in magenta, because that is an altitude restriction over here at Otbed. There we have our little green descent donut, or yo-yo, and uh, it's showing us that we're getting below our descent profile. That should come back towards us as we join the descent profile. All right, so a nice shallow 1,000 foot per minute descent till we reach our descent profile. So that's looking good so far. And uh, yeah, flight level 290, that's correct. So let's see where we'll reach 290. So that's not correct. We should reach 290 before we get to uh, hot bed. So that doesn't look right. Let's see if that comes back a little bit. That marker is showing you where we're gonna reach our altitude in the window. So that should be before hot bed. All right, we're definitely not descending fast enough. Let me just zoom out a little bit. Yeah, I was trying to dive down to reach that altitude restriction. It's not going to make it. Hmm, oh, it did. <laughs> that was a quick dive. Yeah, just about didn't make that. Anyway, let's continue the descent. Oops. To our next altitude restriction of 170. Uh, we'll call it a made it. We were like 200 feet too high, so not too bad. Let's zoom out a little bit. So, yeah, we have uh, there we're going to reach 170, so it's way too early. Again, if I go further down, you can see we have flight level 170 in magenta. That is our altitude restriction over there, and we're going to reach it about there. Alright, so here we are approaching Goles, and it looks like again we're going to be a couple of hundred feet too high. We're slightly above the descent profile, as you can see by this green circle over here. It's hovering just a little bit below where we are, so we should be a little bit lower. Maybe it'll come back before we reach Goles. Five nautical miles to go. But it seems to be holding steady at that uh, range. Let's 
so two and a half nautical miles to go. 500 feet too high. Alt constraint star, 200 feet. Uh, we'll call it a win. That's pretty much bang on. 100 feet, give or take. I'd say that's successful. Alright, the next altitude restriction is at uh, 070, and that's at uh, Rosen. But before that, we got some speed restrictions to adhere to. So, we need to be at 250 knots at Pole Hill, and that will be our deceleration marker there. Okay, so here we're approaching that uh, deceleration marker. Let's see if the aircraft uh, starts slowing down. Alright, so there is the deceleration marker and the aircraft slowing down. MCRs detected, so let's put the MCRs on. Pretty cool. Okay, so 250 knots just as we reach uh, Paul Hill. That's good. Seems we have icing conditions. I don't see how, but anyway. All right, 250 knots. That's good. So we're about to go through 10,000 feet. I can turn on the seatbelt sign so long. Landing lights can go on. There we have our constraint 7000, so we should level off here at 7000. And we're starting to slow down to 230 knots. Alright, so that's well done. We are now in the clouds. about this little mark over here. Alright, so we're approaching Rosen. We're going to descend from flight level 070 through to 3500 feet now. The descent is continued. We can set uh, QNH 984. And we're going to descend to 3500, and that's going to be our intercept altitude for the ILS. Alright, approach checklist. We have briefing confirmed. ECAM status is checked. Landing distance, we'll uh, pretend that we've confirmed it. Seatbelt signs are on. Barrel reference, we have 984 set both. Minimums, we have 386 set. Engine mode selector is normal. That is the approach check is complete. Where are we going? No, it's lost, it's heading now. No, it's lost where it's going now. So let's go direct. Nope, okay, it's lost it. So let's go heading mode. I did 
think all those um, turns was going to confuse it a little bit. So after this turn it rose and it got a little bit confused and the intercept heading had lost it after that. So we're going to do heading select and we'll just choose the heading to get us to the initial approach fix. That should be good for a more or less 90 degree intercept. So let's turn left to a heading of about 160. Okay, cool, so we are approaching the ILS for 05 right. Just ignore these ground textures. I'm struggling with my internet today. So they're not loading in. I should have gone offline mode before I started flying. Alright, let's see if we can capture this ILS. This autopilot has been a little bit buggy for the approach. It did well for the descent. Oh, there we go, got some ground textures loaded. Okay, so we're turning now. Still haven't captured the localizer. Okay, there we go, localizer's captured. Let's start slowing down, so I'm gonna set flaps one. the glide slope. There we go, glide slope's captured. So now we should start our descent towards the runway. Okay, glide slope start, localizer, and we are descending. Alright, eight miles to go, set flaps two. I'm going to start slowing down. seem to be slowing down at all so I'm going to lower the landing gear get some drag going see if that slows us down the aircraft's really struggling to slow down 2500 okay now the see speed seems to be coming back slowly assume that we've been cleared to land so I'm put the runway turn of lights on come on the landing lights on this can go off on the speed brakes in the cabin all right there's 160 ish so flaps three went from the right. There's flaps full. We are fully configured. So landing checklist. Cabin crew has been advised. Auto throttle we have speed. Auto brake is set. ECAM member we have landing no blue and we are clear to land. Missing all these ground textures because of my poor internet today. One thousand. Continue. All right, we're going to fly this autopilot all the way down to minimums and see how she does. Holding the ILS quite nicely, we on localizer, on glide slope, speed is good.
300. So we're done. The only thing that I was looking at there on that landing was these terrible ground textures. I need to see why my internet is struggling. Anyway, let me slow down, break. I didn't even set the auto brakes. We will clear off the runway over here. Alright, so we have a successful landing in the Inibals A320 version 2. Did struggle a little bit with the approach. We had to reback to ourselves onto the ILS. But I'd say all in all it was um, a successful first flight in the A320 version 2. So let me just stop here, clean up the aircraft. So strobe lights can go off. Landing lights can go off. Let's uh, start the APU. Transponder can go off. Flaps can go up. Retract the spoilers. Put it to can go off. And we can taxi to a stand. Where are we going to taxi to? So, bring out the airport chart for Manchester. We're gonna go Bravo Zulu Bravo up. Actually, we'll go up Delta Zulu Papa and we'll park somewhere here. So, where are the stands? We'll go Delta Zulu Papa Bravo. We'll go to stand 43. Alright, cool, let's go. So, I don't know, guys, let me know what you think. I think this aircraft definitely has some potential. I'm sure it's going to be well fixed by the time some update uh, 15 is out. I think we got about a month or so, maybe even less. It's supposed to be out in a couple of days, but they have postponed it. So, uh, I think it's giving you time to work on this aircraft and a little bit of other fixes and bugs that need to be sorted out. But yeah, as I said, I'm definitely hopeful for this aircraft. If I was on Xbox, I think you guys should get excited because it's definitely a step up from what you have available at the moment. I know it's a pity you can't get the fly by wire. I know you have the BMDG, but for Airbus, I think this is definitely a step in the right direction. As always, thanks very much for watching. I'm going to just go and shut this aircraft down. I will see you next time. Make sure you like and subscribe. Make sure you check out Aviation I'll get your merchandise and support the channel. Uh, join us on Discord so you can come and uh, talk to us there. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Cheers.